Alright, and welcome back to Quadcopter Tip Tutorials. Uh, so, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can use DMA for um, serial data transmission. You can debug your project with this uh, little technique. The advantage of it is uh, because you're using DMA for data transmission, so it only takes up a little bit of CPU time. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to open up this uh, STM32 Cube MX. Uh, all right. Um, so my board is 407 VGT. So uh, you should select your board if you're not using the same as mine. Uh, all right. The first thing to do is to maximize the window. <laughs> I'm joking. The first thing to do is to uh, set up your USART. So I'm currently using USART 1. If you're using other USART, you can just select the one you want. So we're going to select Asynchronous. Alright, so um, that's it. And the next thing, we should use the high-speed clock with Crystal uh, Resonator. So we're going to select the high-speed clock. And here, so we're going to maximize the speed so in the configuration section uh, actually i'm gonna enable the free routers if any of you are interested but if you don't want to use free routers you can just skip this step okay it's enabled so i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna change the default task to um uh default task okay so all right so the next thing so the next thing to do is to make a little uh, configuration of the user the f first one is to select the right bout rate so i'm currently using 57600 and uh, here's a little bit tricky if you're not using parity bit for data check um, you should you should just leave it alone. You should you shouldn't do anything. If, but if you're using even parity or odd parity, you should uh, change the word length to nine, nine bits to include uh, the parity. All right. So to use the DMA, you should um, click the DMA settings and click add, and select both of the pin. So you should enable the uh, user one glo global interrupt. All right. So um, what should what we should do is yeah generate a code now. So uh, debug debug. Oh, I think that's fine. The, for the two chain, I'll use make file. All right. So now the code is generated successfully. We should drag the debug the file root your project root into the visual studio code so i showed you in a previous video that if you want to use the visual studio you should uh, at least change the the path of the gcc here so um uh, so i'm gonna find the location of the gcc here very easy so here's the path to my GCC compiler. I'm going to copy and paste it here. So this is going to be it. That's it. I'm going to go back to main file. Uh, I'm going to compile the code. So everything would be fine. Uh, first of all, there are two libraries we want to include. The first one is going to be the string library because obviously we're using string the second one is stdr yeah all right so <clears throat> down here we should implement some functions all right the first function you should implement is the print function so what you should do first is to uh, declare some params some arguments uh, first, for the second one, it's gonna be the 
the other arguments do you, you want to format in the first one? Uh, so uh, the first thing to do, we're gonna check if the user art, uh, if the art uh, serial port art port is available. So you're gonna use get state g state to get the state of the UART. If, so if it is not equals UART uh, stay ready, if it is not ready, we will wait until it's ready. So the, the second one, we should um, make a list of the arguments. So the first, for the third one, we should start the argument. Start putting the all the argument you put here into the buffer. Here is actually a little bit confusing, but it doesn't matter. You get used to it. FMT. So, so for the second one, you should uh, vSpring. Uh, so for this one. You, what we what you should do is to declare a buffer. You're gonna declare a buffer for data transmission. Let's say debug tx buffer. So I'm gonna name. Uh, I'm gonna declare it to the length of 100. So it would be enough. Uh, so we're gonna put everything into this buffer like this have empty and also the arguments uh, it would be better if you just force the uh, buffer to chart arrays so we're gonna end this now and the arguments All right, so the last thing to do is to begin the data transmission. Is uh, So this step is even easier than you thought. You just use the transmit DMA. And um, the first param is going to be the um, HUR1. Um, the second one is going to be the buffer, actually. And the third one is gonna be the data that you want to transmit. So we're gonna just so what we're gonna do is use this string length to calculate it automatically. Uh, so we're gonna force it to a const chart array. Uh, also want to paste this. We also want to copy and paste this uh, debug buffer here. So uh, everything looks fine, but uh, there's another thing we want to uh, implement. That is, uh, I've tested so many times that we can, this function can only print out string integers, uh, something like that. It cannot print out float numbers. So what we're gonna do is to implement another float, uh, another function to print out float numbers so here we're gonna name a argument called a number which is a float type num float type number so what we're gonna do is very easy we just convert we just convert this into integers uh, we're, we're gonna convert the the two parts of the float number into integers and print it out So the last tab is use the print function that we just implemented and um, this is actually here is the first time that I show you how to use the print function. You just 
use it like the printf function in C. Uh, so that's it. That's what you want to do. For, this, for the first one, you want to print out a number. For the second one, you should print out the temp. So that's it. That's everything you need to do. So now what we should do is to print out something to um, for demonstration. So the first one, uh, what I want to print is a doctor phone calls. I can't even write my name. Oh my god. Calls. Pi equals So the second one we should print out the a integer. Oh no, a float number. So here we're gonna we're gonna declare a float number called pi, which equals 3.141592. Uh, so pi. So you should pay attention here. To end this line, you should also uh, print this. So I guess everything is gonna be fine now. Let's compile the code again. Oh, it's complaining something. All right, all right. Uh, we should use print flow that we just implemented. So everything would be fine. So let's open up the SDM 32Q programmer. So let's connect the uh, STM32 with the USB and uh, put the STM32 into boot mode and refresh here, USB 1 and we're gonna open up a file we just created Where is it? Where is it? It's called the block Okay, um, in the build uh, There you are and we're gonna click connect and download everything's gonna be fine so we're gonna um, so what are we gonna do is to uh, plug the serial in you just connect the serial however you want uh, so we're gonna use a software now here to observe the data so now I'm using odd Stop it is one. Uh, but bout rate is this. Hmm, so everything is gonna be fine. So what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna disconnect this one, and we're gonna press the reset button. So that's it. That's everything. Yeah, it's fine. Sometimes there are some errors. Um, I don't know why, but it just printed a part of it. But in most cases for debugging is enough see that is the uh, number so this is the video for today hope you enjoy and learn something in the next video i'll teach you how to receive serial data with dma see you next time thanks